it's me again, hi. Um, somehow the title is a bit off, but yeah, so this is joint work with my advisor, Vasilis Godzillas, Kostas uh, Kolias, and Alchemides Burica. Um, and then I guess like uh, the floor is kind of like the same, so I'll probably just go through this very briefly for, for <laughs> someone who just walked in. Um, this paper is similar to the previous paper where we're trying to extend this learning augmented algorithm design framework to a more kind of like complex setting where people are strategic and they can misreport. Um, so a little bit different from the previous one, this one is, in my point of view, a little bit more complex in a sense that it's a decentralized mechanism design system. In the fact that no, it's on top of uh, people, like the mechanism doesn't know about the agent's preference, he has no fully control over the outcome of the settings. So kind of like just to make my, this point more concrete and to get people who are not really familiar with decentralized mechanism system, let's consider like a very simple game on this graph. So consider this family of game where we have M players somewhere on the graph. You can think of the colors as one of them as a player. And each of them needs to connect to this source. You can think of them as like you have a bunch of uh, factories trying to connect to the power source. And then they have to each choose a path to connect it. So the blue agent can choose one path. The purple or the pink agent choose another one. Per pink do the same and uh, finally the green. Now each edge has a cost. And then the cost is a function defined by the load on the cost. So if, for example, for, for some of the edges, the, the load is two, like the orange and the, the, the green agent actually share it. And for the rest of the edges, uh, the load is one. Um, the agent using an edge needs to cover the cost incurred by their existence. And the agent will choose the path strategically aiming to minimize their cost share. So, Initially, in this line of literature, or like the first thing that people come to mind, you know, in terms of fairness, we should equal share the cost, right? Because both of us are using it, why, why am I paying more than you? Well, if the cost is shared equally among the agent, in fact, it would, um, you know, lead to a very inefficient outcome. So, very hand wavily and formally, let's, we define, we use price of anarchy to define the efficiency of an outcome. Sort of the price of anarchy is trying to capture the, the total cost people paid in the worst Nash equilibrium, pure Nash equilibrium, over the optimal social cost that we can achieve in this um, system. So just to provide a very simple example to demonstrate the points, think of you have an agent, all of them co-located at this terminal T, and all of them are trying to connect to the source. They can either use the path on top which has a cost function linearly as the load. So if you have three agents, three, five agents, five. And then you can you also choose the lower path where it's a constant cost function at one plus epsilon always, no matter the load. This is probably a very uh, familiar example. Notice that everyone choosing the top edge is actually a Nash equilibrium because in that case, all of their, uh, if we assume sharing equally the cost, all of them has a cost share of one. Therefore, no one wants to deviate to the bottom edge in which their cost will be one plus epsilon. So it's like strictly more. But if everyone is uh, on the top edge, the total cost is N, whereas the optimal strategy in this case is, it, is like clearly that everyone should choose the bottom edge, in which case the uh, total cost is one plus epsilon. Therefore, the price of anarchy in this case is at least N. So you know, equal sharing will not work. We need to be more smart. We need to consider the graph, consider the cost function, and consider where is the agent at. Um, so the more elaborate cost sharing mechanisms are needed. So to kind of like demonstrate how information plays a role in this decentralized mechanism design settings, let's consider some different like prior works have considered these different information assumptions. Um, yeah, somehow the N is like, it should be up there, it's not down here. But on um, this fully decentralized settings, we have oblivious protocols we call, which has no, no um, information about anything. It, don't, it doesn't know the graph, it doesn't know the cost functions, or the set of agent. They don't know anything. For example, the equal share that we just described doesn't need to know anything, right? You just, no matter how many agents are in what graph, what cost functions, you're just gonna equally share it. It's oblivious, it's very decentralized, very good. On the other spectrum, we have omniscient protocols where um, they know everything. They know the graph, they know the cost functions, they know the set of agent, where are they? They always achieve good price of anarchy, but 
it's kind of impractical to assume that a mechanism designer have so much information in a decentralized setting. And also at the same time, when you kind of like set up a system, in a previous example we have, if you have a factory, you have a bunch of factory, you have a power source, once you set up the system, so the graph and the cost function, they don't really change. It's the user that changes a lot. So some of the prior works given these two kind of like um, concern that I just proposed have this like very nice uh, protocol model that sits right between oblivious and omniscient where they assume, okay, you know the graph, you know the cost function, you know the system, but you don't know the set of user that changes day to day. And just to kind of like demonstrate how these information assumption or information limitation has a great impact on the cost uh, performance of the cost sharing protocols, for multicast games where all of the cost functions are constant, the prior work has shown that no, no resource aware mechanism can do better than log n, whereas there exist um, omniscient protocols that gives you a two. That's a very huge gap. And then I want to remind everyone, the only difference between the resource aware mechanism and omniscient mechanism is the fact that omniscient mechanism knows the set of users. But you know, similarly, we're trying to resolve this issue given we have so many historical data. We, there's like so much good machine learning that can give you a good prediction. This impossibility resolved lead by this on this, like on this, uh, this assumption is kind of not necessary, like it's a too pessimistic. And similarly as before, I'm just gonna go through this pretty fast because we go through this already. Um, we assume that given a resource share mechanism, and then the fact that they don't know the set of user and they don't have fully control over the outcome, we're gonna give him an, a prediction over the things that he doesn't know. We're gonna give you some prediction regarding the set of user. It doesn't have to be the full set. It could be some condensed bit of information, which we're gonna see later. And we ask the same question as we asked in the previous um, result. Can decentralized protocols, enhanced with predictions, achieve improved price of anarchy? And then the metric we use is also similar as before, where we're trying to simultaneously achieve good consistency with good robustness. Where consistency is the worst case price of anarchy given a correct prediction, and robustness is the worst case price of anarchy overall. So just to kind of like showcase our result first, we focus on two particular subclass of um, the game, where we first consider the series parallel graph which is, you can think of it as an extension of the parallel graph, with arbitrary non-decreasing cost functions, where the best known robustness, where the best known one can hope for, for resource aware, is log uh, big O of n. And our result is that we achieve 4n robustness and 4 consistency. So kind of like explain this further, we asymptotically achieve the, achieves the best known robustness, and providing with a correct prediction, we get a small constant consistency. And we also um, discussed a multicast game, which is kind of like more classic and then people probably like know this better, where we have a general graph with constant cost functions. Um, the prior work has shown that as we saw before, no one can achieve uh, better than log n approximation with resource aware mechanisms, where we achieve log n robustness and for consistency again best possible robustness with small, con small constant consistency. And given the time I have, I'm probably gonna, not gonna talk anything about the series parallel, we're gonna just focus on multicast and to kind of like give you guys a sense of you know, what prediction is useful, how do we use this prediction to, you know, in the decentralized mechanism world to achieve good price of anarchy. So again, formally defined a setting, multicast game is general graph, with constant cost function. So it's a simpler setting where all of the cost is just constant. Algorithmically, if we have full control over the results, if we know the terminals, if we have fully control over the outcome, it's just a minimum Steiner tree problem where you just take all of the terminal and the source and run the minimum Steiner tree algorithm. Now, like adding a little bit difficulty without a prediction, um, I, like, I, like we said before, all of a sudden, if you don't know the set of users, no resource aware mechanism can achieve a price of anarchy better than log n. Now let's consider like what, what's the prediction, like similar question, what do we want to predict? How do we use it? Let's first actually consider a simpler setting where in fact, you know the set of user, like the, the, so you know who's gonna come. You don't know where exactly is their, predict, uh, is their location. 
So we predict, for each of the agents, we have a prediction over their locations. You can think of all of the yellow dots as the prediction. Now, given this uh, predicted location sets, um, we propose a cost sharing mechanism that is resource aware for consistent and logarithm robustness, like I said before. And on top of that, similarly, as the previous uh, work we did, we also want this price of anarchy to be a function of the error. Because consistency doesn't bite you that much, but we want to kind of like, we don't want you to be too sensitive with the errors. So um, we define the uh, quality of the prediction as the uh, distance between the actual predicted, uh, actual locate terminal and the predicted terminals. And then as you can see, if your you know, distance is somewhat reasonable, you still get small constant uh, performance compared with log n, which is still huge improvements. So the way we achieve or the way we use prediction is that we use this prediction to define an ordering um, of all of the vertices guided by this prediction. And then I'm gonna tell you how we use this order to define the protocol later. Um, but the way we define this ordering is that we take the metric closure of the initial graph, and then we run the minimum sp uh, spanning tree, which is a two approximation of the minimum Steiner tree, with all of the vertices, all of the terminals, and the source. And then we run a DFS, and then uh, follow the DFS's rule. So DFS finds you first, we give you the first order. We do that, two, three, and then so on and so forth. So we have like an ordering of all of the ver terminals. Now to expand this kind of like priority to all of the vertices, we simply match each vertices to its closest terminals. Now, and then what we do is we kind of like inherit this priority. So for all of the vertices that is matched with the first terminal, they're gonna have a lower ordering than terminal two, terminal three vertices that is uh, connected with terminal three. With that, you update the whole kind of like, you have a predict, uh, you have a order of all of the vertices. Now, taking the specific ordering defined by prediction, we're just gonna simply apply our order protocol. That sounds fancy, but it's a constant cost function, so what does that mean is, we're just gonna charge the agent using this edge with the smallest order, the whole cost. You're gonna pay everything, nobody's gonna pay nothing. Um, it sounds like, uh, a bit unfair, but it's like given, um, given this like, um, yeah, it sounds a bit unfair, sorry. And um, we, we, our result actually, so this algorithm, ex, I'm sorry, not algorithm, this mechanism actually extend to the setting even when the set of player is unknown. So like we said before, the first prediction we consider is when the set of player, we actually do know them, we just don't know where they are, so we you know, have a prediction. But this result even extends to, we don't even know the set of no, uh, users, and we don't know their um, networks. And we still get this poor consistency and login robust. Kind of like just to recap this paper, I guess like both of my talks here. Um, in both of the talk, we consider learning augmented mechanism design, where the first one we consider centralized, the second one is decentralized. Um, the kind of like the information we really want to deliver right here is the fact that um, and we believe that learning augmented framework is very useful in also in the mechanism design world. And you can ask like sort of different types of mechanism design question in that, inside this framework. And then a lot of like different lines of work is also like interesting. What type of information is helpful? Um, like is more information necessarily gives you good outcomes? And then like uh, how good you can achieve the optimal trade-off or the best of both worlds. But yeah, um, uh, thank you. That's all my talk. Yeah. So we have time for a few questions. Yeah. Thank you. That's uh, the, uh, the very interesting. Have you considered price of stability in this context? So I believe, like for the multicast game, you can get a constant price of stability. Yes. So. Um, it, the price of stability so is a. Question for oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, the question is, uh, did we consider the price of stability? So for who probably not familiar with the price of stability, the price of anarchy is considering the worst the Nash equilibrium, where the price of stability is considering the best Nash equilibrium. Um, for multicast, I believe there already exists now resource uh, price of stability with constant or it's like almost optimal. So kind of like the question we look here in mechanism design with prediction framework is that you have this very pessimistic lower bound, 
that is kind of like unnecessary. And then we want to kind of like use prediction to overcome this um, lower bound. We did consider price of stability with multi-commodity where people's source are also different. Um, we don't have, yeah, we don't, yet don't have like any like trivial um, work there, non-trivial um, results yet. <laughs> Not trivial, yeah. All right. Yeah. I have a question. So it seems like the results depend a lot on the, what information can the predictor provide, right? So if you provide a different set of information, for example, I can assume I, I know basically everything about this, uh, like a stronger prediction. So that, so first I think that will change how you design this mechanism, how you make the mechanism work. And second, I think that will also uh, change the, the consistency and robustness trade-off thing. So my question basically is, um, uh, if I assume I know more thing about this problem, can that improve the, this trade-off between these two? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I get. Uh, I suggest taking the question offline in the interest of time, if you don't mind. Okay, sure, yeah, we can talk time. more uh, so offline. Uh, I was answering the question offline. Okay. All right. Thanks.